Hi guys, Jay Smith here, welcome to our school for that channel. Welcome to one of the most requested videos so far, and it's between old and new. We've got the old Pro 223 against the new Mizuno Pro 243. Now, thanks to Mizuno, this side of the video, the tech side, will not take long whatsoever because these are very, very close in technology. They're both made of very similar things, if not exactly the same. They're chromoly when it comes to the 47 iron, then they go into 1025E in the scoring irons. They both got micro slots in them, that little kind of cut area which you can't see behind the face and that gives a little bit more of a spring to it very much so what they've got in the jpx 923 forge although in the 243 is slightly bigger in the longer irons for increased launch etc they've both got soft copper underlays that lovely little process that mizuno use now to make the sound of the iron a certain way a slightly more increased bounce on the 243 it is only a degree or so guys. So all of these changes in here are going to be fairly small. And of course the 243 as well, they're saying is slightly more compact. But again, if you look at these together, I mean, you'd be hard pressed to see too much of a difference, if any, between old and new. Right, that was nice and easy. Let's go get on a hole. So I think what the biggest difference is gonna be on this one is what's under the hood. When you start hitting this a load of times, and I'll be doing my full forgiveness testing like I normally do, to see actually what happens when you put these like for like, again, 32 degrees, 32 degrees there's no difference in loft either what happens when you put them head to head what kind of performance and forgiveness you get right let's go get the simulator on let's go give it a hit into the green and let's go see how they both get on 223 in our hands now we'll do this one first before the 243 the simulator is now on we're at Kinsale Golf Club hole 17 it's a par 3 of nearly 170 yards again these are 32 degree lofted 7 iron so they should get here okay looks again you're looking at a top line which is medium to thin again sole thicknesses are well they're not very big but I mean they're beveled at the back so they actually look bigger than the physical size of the sole and then blade lengths it's slightly bigger than that of the uh 243 but down by the golf ball this thing does not look very big at all let's give it a hit well that's the safe side low toe though slightly but um definitely got there cool yeah, that's a good birdie part that yeah, low toe there, four mil toe, eight mil low. So not the greatest, shall we say, but path is from the inside. So we're doing well on that one. Um, feeling wise, you can't really say when it's eight mil low, it's not really fair on the golf club whatsoever. 31 yards in the air, 47 degrees and angles. As you saw, it stopped. No problem whatsoever. I'm not gonna go my full speed, uh, but I'll just, well, again, I'll, I'll keep it under 90 miles an hour if I can. Um, but it's working very well, even though that was an eight mil low, four mil toe, 12 mil gross off of middle. This has got the micro slot and that micro slot in there is designed to allow the face to flex. And when you hit it 12 mil off center, it's flexing quite a lot. But again, I don't think there's gonna be that much difference between these two at all. That's a little bit more of a braver line, but it's just gonna go in nice and hopefully stop fairly well. Yeah, look at that. That's what you're gonna get with these ones. They just, they just work really well. Path 0.4 from the inside, face baby open. Uh, one mil low, zero mil toe, good strike, no problems whatsoever on that one. It feels, it's chromoly, so it's not gonna feel like the blades. I mean, if you go into the eight, nine and pitch and wedge, etc., then yes, that is a 1025E, and it does feel much like the blade. The seven to four has a little bit of punch to it. One complaint there was, and it wasn't something that happened every single person that bought it, it was quite m minor, but it was there, is that sometimes people were complaining that the difference between the seven iron and eight iron, when we're talking about the transition between chromoly and then uh, 1025E, and then you've got micro slot, you've got no micro slot, the change of tech was the fact they got some interesting gapping issues, shall we say, between the seven and the eight. And when it comes to the 243, they said they've reworked it to make sure there is no gapping issues. I personally didn't see it, but again, I'm not saying it was, it's just something that was reported. But yeah, there you go. These feel just exactly how they're meant to. Players irons look lovely and feel lovely too. Now that's the safe side. I'm not going near that water. <laughs> Oh, just on the green. Path 0.5 from the inside, 1.2 close. That's why I just baby fed it that way. Um, zero mil heel, four mil low, working well, 32 yards in the air and 47 degrees ascent angle, stopping on any green as you saw at 170 yards. Now, 87 miles an hour, that's not my full out speed, but it's still carrying well for a slower swing. It's just nice. 
and this, I've, I play blades, so I go to this, and this does feel a little bit more punchy, shall we say, yes, but as soon as you get down to the eight, uh, pitch and wedge, nine iron, that kind of thing, it goes back into the blade feels. So anyway, these are players' golf clubs, guys. These are not game improvement irons. So let's get that one straight away. Anyone who's looking at these are not looking at golf clubs that's gonna need masses of help getting golf balls in the air. They don't swing very quick, so they're gonna need all these springy faces. They hit the face all over the face with golf ball strikes, so they need as much help. These are not those. And so you are going to have to have a modicum of strike to use these, and you are definitely gonna to have to have some modicum of speed and also being able to use these golf clubs the proper way to get the most out of them. One more and then we'll flick over to the 243. Oh, that's definitely left. That's bunker. That's anti, anti, anti river. That will be an interest. Oh no, it's fine. Uh, that's gone into the flat. Path, pretty good. Face, not so good. 2.8 shut, there's the reason why that went left. That's not going in the water. Bunker is definitely safer than the drink. Uh, but it's going 34 yards in the air, 48 degrees of center angle. So if that was to have hit the green, of which it didn't, it would have absolutely stopped. But my poor face control and my wimping out decided to go into the bunker rather than risk going in the water. Right, so let's go flick over to 243. It'd be interesting to see how it feels different when the 223 to 243. We'll go to the looks because there's not that much difference in looks either. But let's go flick over to 243 and see how different they are. Day set now changed. We have got the 243 in our hands and I'll be honest, apart from the slight change at the back, where this is more V-shaped, where it's flatter and straighter on the 223, they look very similar as well. Top lines you've got on the 243, maybe slightly thinner. Uh, sole thicknesses, I would say, give or take, guys, is about exactly the same. Blade lengths, this is where it's slightly different. They're saying that the 243 is slightly smaller, and I would say, yes, down by the golf ball. If I had to be pushed as to one looks smaller than the other, I would have to say it would be the 243, but it is minor. The 223 is already fairly small. Right, let's, let's go see if we can hit it into this green and not hit it in the drink. Uh-oh. Oh, I thought for a second that was gonna fade a touch more. That's as far right as I really want to because that green gets dangerously close to going that way. Club path 1.3 from the inside, good. Face point 1.1 open, not so good. Uh, five mil low, zero mil hill, good strike, that's no worries. 34 yards in the air and 48 degrees ascent angle. So it is stopping, as you saw, on, well, I mean, these are quite fast greens and it's stopping quite well. Feel-wise, it just feels just exactly the same as the 223. I can't tell the difference. They're both copper underlaid. They're both made of the same thing. They've got slight reworked undersides and under the hood, I mean, slightly thinner faces and stuff like that. But I mean, it's so minor. I can't really tell any difference. I mean, that one shot, do, do they go up fractionally higher? I don't know. Give it another go. I mean, it's just nice. I can't complain in the slightest. 87.9 miles an hour, trying to take some speed off a fraction. Club path from the inside, face still baby open, three mil low, four mil heel. It's just doing really, really well. Feels really nice, but it's no different. It's 35 yards in the air, 49 degrees ascent angle. So is it going slightly higher than the 223? I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna have to hit this loads of times, like 50 times each to get a proper average because you've got human error and stuff like that. And of course, everyone sort of varies slightly. And the bigger the data set you get, the more of a better average. And of course, hit them all over the face for some uh, forgiveness stuff. Now, I'm not gonna go crazy. There's no point in gathering some really crazy extreme strike data on these because these are not for people that will be whacking interesting parts of the face. But uh, yeah, two good shots. I'll take that all day long. That's left, that's chickened out. <laughs> as soon as I hit that, it's chickened out, but it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Go on, run down the hill. This could get close. Don't run too far that way, obviously. That's the, that's the water. Path 0 0.7, face is dead on. Two mil low, one mil hill. Uh, 33 yards, 32 yards in the air, 47 degrees at angle. So it's, that was me. I de-lofted that one slightly. 24.9 degrees of loft, the other ones are 27. So that's why it just went shoved left a little bit. Uh, it's good though. The feeling of it is just exactly the same as 223. I cannot tell a difference at all. 
I really can't. So if you're going to be looking at buying a set of two four threes over a set that you've already got for two two three, thinking they're going to feel nicer, they feel exactly the same. They look very similar. They're made very similarly. They've got some slight different tech changes in it, but it'll be interesting to see if it makes a difference in performance and forgiveness. That's a handoff. Not bad result. <laughs> that was not good at all. Bit low. Club path slightly from the inside, still working that path. Uh, face over close this time, but two mil hill, 10 mil low. 30 yards in the air, 30 and a half yards in the air, but 46 degrees of center angle is still stopping on any green, and that is 10 millimeters low. That's efficiency of 1.32. That's very, very good, considering obviously this is not a forgiving eye. I reckon 1.35 maybe the like maxed out you can get from one of these straight out the middle. So 1.32 from a not ideal hit, uh, 10 mil low, is doing very, very well. Right, let's go do the forgiveness. Let's go whack it all over the face. Go get to 223, the 243, whack them identically or as best as possible. Let's go see if there's a performance difference between these two. Does the 243 go slightly higher and stop slightly steeper than the 223. Don't know, we'll have a look. And also, is the 243 with the rework face any more forgiving? Let's go see if there's any differences between the Mizuno Pro 223 and the Mizuno Pro 243. We saw in the simulator it is very, very close when it comes to looks and feel and also performance. Let's go actually see if there's a difference in peak height, descent angles and carry and also forgiveness as well. We have got a remake or re um, designed face in the 243 with a slightly thinner in certain areas, designed to be a little bit more helpful off, off center hits, but these are not game improvement irons. Let's go have a look. Anyway, so I've got the averages on the screen now for the ball speed and also the club heads data as well. Let's go by the ball uh, data first. 118.6 to 119.4. Let's not get carried away of the 0.8 of a mile an hour increase on the 243 over the 223 until we look at the club head side. Uh, but 19.8 to 19.9, so 0.1 of a degree. That is well within the realms of me being the um, human in the equation. So I wouldn't necessarily one launches more than the other one. 5.7 um, spin against 5.7 spin. That is a grand total of about 12 RPM difference between the two exactly the same carry 168 to 169 and peak height 35 yards in the air 36 yards in the air 48 and a half degrees descent angle 48.8 degrees descent angle so so close you've got the club head data we've got 88.7 to 88.9 so again we've got a club head speed 0.2 of a mile an hour faster so there will be a certain amount of ball speed attributed to that but i mean it's so minor uh, efficiency is 1.34 a piece but remember there are some mishits in there as well uh, 4.2 down to 3.9 down club path slightly from the inside face slightly closed no different and 27.3 to 27.2 Dynamic loft, the loft that I delivered. They're both 32 degrees static, but in most cases you deliver a slightly less loft because we are 0.1 of a degree. And two mil hill, three mil, hill, uh, three mil low, and zero mil toe, three mil low. So there's two millimeters uh, horizontal difference. That is it between the strikes. And arguably, if you look at the stand deviation, uh, stand deviation is effectively a measure of my variance. Uh, four mil, three mil, three mil, two mil. So within one millimeter, uh, hardly any. But to be fair, I did hit the Pro 243 one millimeter better on the stand deviation, but there you go. So the uh, graphical representation, what people see sometimes is a better understanding of what you see rather than tabular data. You can see we have got a blue line which is fractionally higher and fractionally longer than the red line. Blue is 243 and red is 223. Is it a marked difference? No, not at all. It is such a small difference. Now this is over, approximately I think it was about 70 shots each. So nearly 150 shots of a data set. And so is there actually a difference? Would the normal person see this? Probably not, I'll be honest. It's not no difference whatsoever. And you can see the strike, yeah. That's a horizontal difference, that is it. But apart from that, everything's the same. So really, we need to have a look at the forgiveness now to see if there's a difference in forgiveness between these two. So first of all, as normal, if we need to and want to find out how well something works from um, not middle, we need to find out how it works from the middle. So I've got two, two, three here first. 
Zero mil high, one mil heel, within one millimeter, bang on. Club path is one from the inside, face is naught, so it's very, very small amounts. And uh, 1.35. And if you go over to a 243, we've got two mil low, very small amounts, and 1.35 again. Okay, so if we were to critique, I'd say that we've got a slightly closed face on this one by 0.4 of a degree on the 223 and 26.6 degrees of loft. On the new one, the 243, we've got a face which is zero, not closed. A closed face, generally speaking, will gain a little bit more efficiency and we have half a degree more loft. You can already tell by the words that I'm using, the differences between these two are so minute. Is there a difference? Well, possibly yes, but would anyone see it? Most probably not. <laughs> so let's go have a look at what happens at the heel. So we've got one here, two, two, three is a 14 mil heel, three mil low. So 14 mil heel is a standard, normal, not very good heel strike. Again, face and path are fairly zero, zero, and we are 1.31. If we go to a two, four, three, and it's slightly better on the strike. So it's 11 mil heel, so it is slightly better. Um, face is open though by 1.3 degrees and loft is well, half a degree more. So again, as soon as you have an open face, that is, you cause yourself to have more deflection. More deflection means less efficiency. And also as you, as you add more loft, you get more deflection. More deflection means less efficiency. So if you were to basically say that, okay, we've hit it slightly better than the 223, but we've delivered an open face and we've delivered more loft, um, even though it's 1.33, if there's going to be a difference, it's like 0.01. And this is the difference, I suppose, when it comes to the face. The face on the 243 is, is thinner in certain areas and it is a much more of a multi-thickness face to take into account off-center hits. Is it gonna be miraculous? Is it a game improvement iron? Not in the slightest. You do have to be trying to hit as middle as best you can do. But to compare both golf clubs, if you hit up the heel and you've got a set of 223s, are you gonna to go to a set of 243s thinking there's gonna be a big game? No. There you go. Um, low on the face, 10 mil low, two mil toe on the 223, 1.30 efficiency, one degree close, 27.7 degrees aloft. 10 mil low, four mil toe. So within two millimeters, exactly the same, we have a half a degree more closed face in the 243, and then we have 0.1 of a degree more loft delivered, 1.31, 0.01 in it. Again, such a tiny amount. Are you going to notice that? You, you're not. You, no, you're, you're not. Um, let's go to two, two, three with a toe now. Thirty mil toe, zero mil high. Um, face and path very close to zero. Twenty-six point four degrees aloft. If you then go to a two, four, three, twelve mil toe, two mil low. So within one millimeter gross of exactly the same. So basically exactly the same. And then we're looking at a what point two to zero face. So that is within very very close amounts and twenty-six point four to twenty-six point five. So again. This is a very, very good capture, 1.33 to 1.31. Okay, so this would be a slight increase, but it's 0.02. Now it is a like for like, and I suppose if you were to put the heel strike, the low strike, and then also the toe strike together, and say, if you were to compare them in totality, not in individual parts, because there's like a 0.01 gain here, a 0.01 gain there, 0.02 gain there, it is such a small amount, but if you were to put it as a whole, the 243 is slightly more forgiving than 223. Is it going to make you race out straight away and buy a set? Probably not. Let's be honest, it's not. But it is a gain. And Mizuna, I think, in all fairness to them, they will say the same thing. With the 243, the 223 was already such a very, very good golf club. Moving from an MP20 MMC, a multi material cavity, they've gone to the 223, which was very, very good. They've copied the JPX 923 Forge technology with the micro slot, and it just works really well. So the 243 was never going to be, we're going to shove that needle, kick it down there, really. It's going to be a nudge of that needle. It is not going to be a big push of it. And so we're looking at Mizuno trying to get this which is already very, very good in the 223, just nudging it just slightly, just to make it slightly better every single iteration. If you go to conclusion, guys, looks on these two, they are very, very close to it. The new 243 looks very similar to a Mizuno uh, MP25 with a kind of V shape at the back. Again, there's no difference when it comes to the finish on them. They look exactly the same. 
they're finished with exactly the same thing. You've got a slightly thinner top line, you have got slightly smaller profile on the 243. Again, if that's what you like, then great. Feel-wise, they are both identical. They're both made of chromoly and they move also into 1025e into the scoring iron, so they feel exactly the same as well. There is no difference there whatsoever. Both got copper underlay. The main thing is on here is the performance is basically exactly the same. You could argue that the 243 may go fractionally higher, may um, go fractionally longer. We are talking such a ridiculously small amount. They are basically exactly the same. So really it comes down to this. Guys, if you've got a set of 223s, do I say to go out there straight away and go buy a set of 243s? No. If you are coming from an older generation of golf clubs and you can get a set of 223s in your spec, again, the crux is on this one, you must know your custom fit spec because it is that important. And you can get a set of 223s next to new on eBay or something like that. Would I say to save the money over a brand new set of 243s, unless you really want something brand new and shiny, of course, go for the cheaper option. But again, with the new things, you have got the availability of custom fit. And if you need a custom fit, because most golfers do, need a, a certain specification, then the 243 being the uh, most current ones and the 223s being discontinued, they can't be custom fit only the 243s can so hope you like the video if you did go on thumbs up youtube likes it so do i down there is the most important button it's the subscribe button if you click that one it's great for the channel it's free so thank you very much and next to that is a bell icon that's a notification bell if you click that one that'll let you know next time I upload another video hope you're well we'll see you again soon